Hi, my name is Owen Barnes and I'm from DS21 at the Data School. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the first and last function, which are both table calculations in Tableau. And I'm going to show you how you can use those to your advantage. We're also going to briefly cover some of the fundamentals surrounding the functions. So I've put out a very simple view here. We have month of order date, the index function, which is something that I covered in a previous video, first and last, and then we just have the sum of sales on text. As we can see immediately, index is starting from the one. So for example, we have 48 marks in our view right now, and index will begin at one, and then it will go all the way down to 48. This is slightly different though with the first and last functions. So they use zero-based indexing. So first here is saying that the first row that we have is January 2017 in this case. And then February 2017 is minus one rows away from the first value we have. And in the same way, but in a kind of reversed fashion with last, at the very bottom, we have a zero here. And then November 2020, in this case, is one row away from the last value, which is December 2020. Something that's worth noting, though, before we move on, is that the first and last and the index values are not tied to the dimension that we have in the view. So, for example, if I just sorted now, which is now going to sort by the sum of sales in a descending way. The first, last and index values don't actually change. And that's because they're not tied necessarily to the month of order date. If I'm just going to go back and then to kind of carry on with this video, what I've done is I've created two examples of how we can use the last function in this case to our advantage but the same could be done with the first function if we maybe wanted to look at let's say the very first value that we have uh, in our data set so i've brought profit ratio into the view here which is if i just open this up it's the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales and this returns an aggregated measure if we were just wanting to return the current month sales for a non-aggregated measure, such as sales or quantity or uh, profit, maybe, we wouldn't need to use a table calculation. But the slight problem that we get if we were, let's say, using a level of detail expression with an aggregated statement is that the left hand side or the kind of part which lets you check if the month is corresponding to the current month or the maximum month, that's not aggregated, whereas the profit ratio calculation is. So one way to get away around this is just to create a new calculation here. And we can just call this current month profit ratio. I'm just going to shorten it to PR. And all we need to do is say if last equals zero. So in this case, if last is zero, which is tied to December 2020, then return the profit ratio. And and this is going to check everything in our view and it's going to say is last equal to zero for these it's going to return nothing but then for the december 2021 which have, has a last value of zero it's going to return that value so if i just drag this now into the view from the data pane we can now see that our rows here are null where last isn't equal to zero but then where that value does equal zero, where last does equal zero here, we do actually have that value returned. And what's nice is that we can then reference this in our title if we were building kind of a one card, a one worksheet KPI. So I can now just, um, if I just cancel here and then I just maybe bring this onto the detail shelf instead of having it in my measure names. If I now just go back into this and then I can reference the current month profit ratio here, and it's just going to show up in the title. We can do this for any of the kind of different aggregated KPIs that we want. In this case, it works quite nicely if we wanted to maybe compare it to the previous month, which would be last equals one. And then we can build out a one worksheet um, KPI. The only thing that's worth noting here is that we need our months to be in the view because that's what our current month profit ratio is going to be computed by. So if I just edit this table calculation here, we can see that the specific dimensions is listing month of order date, which is what we need it to be computing by. In the second example, I wanted to just, I created a little scenario here where we can use last as a filter, but something that we can also do is we can use last to our advantage. So in the order of operations, the table calculations don't happen as quickly. Uh, they happen a bit further down compared to a dimension filter. 
So I've made a calculation here, which is just going to be checking the last six months. And this is just saying, is the month of order date bigger than the kind of six months taken away from the maximum of our date? So it's basically taking six months away from December 2020. And then it's just going to return true if it's kind of between those values. So November, December, et cetera, and so on until we are six months back will be returned. If I just add this to filters now, select true. We now have six marks in the view and we go from July until December. But what if I wanted to still be able to access that previous value? So in this case, June, uh, maybe I wanted to kind of create a comparison to the previous value or I wanted to just see what the previous value was. But in this case, I need the view to only show the past six months. I've created a calculation here, which is just called the previous value. And this is just a lookup of the summer sales and it's just going back one. So this, in this case, for this value here, will be referencing June. In August, it'll be referencing July. In September, it'll be referencing August and so on. And if I just bring this into the view, maybe if I put it on tooltip, if I hover over now, we're not actually going to be able to see that previous value for this month, so for July. But then if I go here, we can actually see the previous value in this case, which is corresponding to July. So if I clear the view now and I just take off the last six months that I've created, I can now create the same view, but I'll be able to see that previous value using a table calculation. So I'm just going to call this last equals is less than six filter. And all I need to do is just say is last less than six. So is the value for last on that computed month of order date? Is it less than six, i.e. the current six months? Well, the most recent six months in this case. And if I just press OK here, I just want to drag this to our filters and then select true. And now we have the exact same view, but what you'll notice is different is here. I can actually see the previous value. So in this case, I can see June sales, even though it's not directly in my view. And one thing we can do to just go a step further is we can edit that table calculation again. We can make it dynamic. So we can say is less than top N. And all I've done here, I'll show you the parameter afterwards, but we can just reference the top N parameter here. And if we press OK, we can then interact with that if we just showed our parameter and we can now filter the view, but we can always see that previous value. And just for reference, the top end parameter is just a very simple integer parameter. I've set the current value here to eight and we've just allowing a range between one and 15, the step size of one. I hope that you found this introduction to the first and last function useful and the examples might be useful in your future work. I did a previous video on the index function, which is covered very briefly in this video, but if you'd like more information on that, you can check that one out in the link below.